Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Daniel and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I have some terrible news for you. Apple harvest season is not here yet. We've already had strawberry season, cherry season, peach nectarine season, but no apple harvest season, which means that my favorite farmer's markets still don't have apple cider for me to turn into hard apple cider. And so in order to remedy this problem, in today's video, I'm going to be turning store-bought apple juice into hard apple cider. I'm going to be using a super simple process a super simple recipe, and this is not something that you need to have experience to do. This is not something that you need to be an expert in order to accomplish. If you have something to sanitize your equipment, apple juice, wine yeast, and a one gallon jug, then you can accomplish this at home too. I'm in no way going to attempt to overcomplicate the process of making hard apple cider from apple juice, and we're about to dive on in, but before we do, I just wanna remind you that if you get something out of this video, please go ahead and hit that like button to help a small channel like myself grow and get in front of more viewers, and if you wanna see more content like this, then go ahead and smash that subscribe button. So now let's go ahead and dive right on into the video. I've been wanting to make hard apple cider for a while. I've been visiting my farmer's markets and it looks like they're not gonna have their apple cider out for a while. So I'm stuck using store-bought apple juice, but that's not a problem at all because I have high hopes that this is going to turn out well. I'm choosing to use the simplest recipe possible, apple juice, yeast, thyme, because I want to establish a baseline. Whenever these farmer's markets sell their apple cider by the gallon, I can't wait to get five gallons of it and then try to make the most fantastic apple cider possible. But I kind of just want to see what apple juice fermented into hard apple cider without all the additives is going to taste like so I can think about what do I want to do differently whenever I go up and do five gallons, that way I'm prepared for the future. So this is just going to be nothing but apple cider, yeast, and thyme. So let's go ahead and start making our one gallon of apple cider. So before we do anything, the thing that I always forget to mention is we need to sanitize all of our equipment. And all I'm really using today is a funnel, a one gallon jug, and an airlock. And I already have everything sanitized and set aside, so let's set this up. So here we have my one gallon of Mott's apple juice. I chose Mott's because it is just a classic and I would love to see what it tastes like as a hard cider. I have my sanitized carboy, my sanitized funnel, and then right here, I'm doing something a little bit different. I've already started my yeast. So I'm using Lalvin EC1118. Um, this is the first time really using one of these and I just kind of read about it and it says that you do not want to pour it directly into your must. Um, you should start it first, and it's not what I normally do, but I follow directions. So that's what we did. If you have no idea what you're looking at right here, and you don't know how to get here, all you need to do is take a little bit of apple juice from your Mott's apple juice. You're going to put it into a container. I warmed it up a little bit because warming up your juice activates the yeast, because that's what you're doing here. I took half the packet of this yeast and added it into the apple juice that was warmed up. And then I let it sit for about 20 minutes. What you're going to see happen is all the yeast is going to fall down to the bottom. And then you're going to see it bloom up because what you're doing is activating, awakening your yeast. In this packet, they get sleepy. They don't really do their job very well. And so when you wake them up, it just gets them ready to start turning the sugar in this apple juice into alcohol. Now, speaking of sugar, one thing that's good to know whenever you're turning apple juice into hard cider is what is the specific gravity. So I took the specific gravity of this Mott's apple juice and it turned out to be 1.046 and I was very relieved and surprised to see that this apple juice all by itself is going to yield me approximately a five to 6% alcohol content for this. I was wondering, do I need to add sugar? No, you really can just take apple juice put it into a jug, add yeast, and nothing else. So that is exactly what we are going to do right now. Okay, while I still have some juice left, I'm gonna throw this yeast in there because I know how much I'd like to stick to the funnel. Well, that wasn't bad at all. Keep in mind, if you're adding juice, and it gets too much above this line right here, and you have a very active fermentation, 
it could bubble over into your airlock and cause a whole mess while you're not paying attention. So we have our apple juice. We have our yeast. I'm gonna add my airlock and we're done. Apple juice, yeast, airlock, that's it. Now I know what you're thinking. There's no way that's all you do to make hard apple cider and you're right. But once I finish doing the exact same steps with my Simply Apple Juice, then I'll explain all the steps that you need to do to get to the bottling process. Okay, round two. I think you guys know what you're doing by now. Okay, so yes, the Simply Apple Juice two containers did not go to exactly one gallon, but that's perfectly fine. I'll just end up with a little bit less in the end. So here we have our two containers of soon to be hard apple cider. So to just recap, all I did was put apple juice in a sanitized carboy. I started my yeast by getting a little bit of warm apple juice, putting half a packet in each one, because I just split one packet between the two of these, and then I let it sit for 20 minutes while the yeast bloomed, which is something you can visibly see. Then I added my apple juice, added my yeast, put on my airlock, and now I'm going to sit and let the yeast do its job. So what are we looking to do next? I'm gonna let these sit in a cool, dark place for two to three weeks. One thing that I'm gonna be paying attention to is the clarity of this, because I do want both of these ciders to be clear before I bottle them. I'm also going to be checking the specific gravity since I already know that this is 1.046 and this is 1.048. I'm looking for them to get around 1.000, maybe a little lower. And then once the specific gravity has stopped dropping, I'll know that the fermentation process is done. And once this is clear, to my satisfaction that is, because it doesn't have to be clear to bottle it, I just want it to be clear. And then once it's clear enough for me, I'm going to add in more apple juice to add more sugar to it. Then I'm going to bottle it in hopes that the sugar that I added to it will continue fermentation and carbonate the beverage inside the bottle. So that is all that I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks, all the way from starting to bottling. And if you are brand new to fermentation, if you've never made wine or cider before, this is an easy first project. All you need is some apple juice you can get at your local grocery store, a packet of wine yeast that you can get online. I'll go ahead and throw a link to this EC1118 down in the description below. If you do not have any glass carboys or airlocks, these jugs, I usually get them for a dollar a piece at the farmer's market. If you don't have access to that, I'll also go ahead and throw a link to this really awesome one gallon wine making kit, which is wine making, cider making, beer making. It is useful for all of those things. And Homebrew Ohio has this consolidated kit that has all of the pieces of equipment that you're gonna need and almost all of the ingredients that you're going to need in order to start your fermentation journey. Um, I'm not gonna draw this out any longer because this is such a simple video. I'm so glad that you guys were here to watch me finally get to make some more cider. I can't wait to see what I'm going to make next. But until then, I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. Stay curious, keep learning new things, and happy brewing.